What's up everybody? Spare what a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another game update on Space Engineers. Um, this one's actually pretty cool. I'm kind of excited about this one. It's uh, mainly the main feature is adding remote control, which is very cool. Um, and it kind of finishes up some of the camera functionality that we discussed in the last one that we got. Um, among other things. There's a lot of little things, but there's a couple big ones. So first, remote ship control, timer block, gravity seal, gravity sensor field view, relayed ore detector. So, uh, the drill should have an ore detector on it, maybe. Doesn't? I don't, I don't recall. Do you have an ore detector? You do. So these have a new option here that says broadcast using antenna. Okay. So what we're going to do is you'll notice the uranium and iron are down there. Now if we were to leave and go over here... That's the up. Okay, so this doesn't have an antenna on it is the problem, I think. So you'll notice it's not in there. Or it's not showing up now because we left the ship. Now if we were to put this on here... Right? Is it still... it did it for a second. I think it has to do with ownership, that nothing here is set to ownership. So let's do that. So that's set to me. So now you're you're picking up my um, angles, or my, my astronaut's antenna, coupled with how far that antenna will reach. Um, first off, let me just delete these, because these always give me problems when I try and do anything that's... <clears throat> that has to do with, like, the ships and changing ownership. They always want to shoot at everything, so I'm just getting rid of those um, to make it easy. And then we'll add this one. So now you can see that off to the side you'll still see uranium and iron. And that's because we're broadcasting through the antennas, so it's pretty cool in that regard. Um, now, so that's that's a fun one. Let me turn this station into... I'm just taking over everything. <laughs> so this platform is now ours. So one of the things that they've added now as well... Let's go ahead and place a sensor, like, here maybe. Um, one of the things they've added now, too, is... let's get the sensor block. There's another option. Change that to me. Uh, where is it? Oh! Uh, sensors can now detect stations. This was not an option before. It is now. So basically, if it's on a ship, you could use it to know when you're landing, is, is kind of the idea. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. It may change how I do um, my landing lights in my station on my survival world. Because this way you could put it on the ship, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but if you turn on show on HUD for this one, and let's find the gravity generator. Show on HUD, which requires an antenna, so this requires an antenna to do. There's two new things, show gravity range and show sensor field range. Um, so you can access this now without the debug... Oh, that's how big the gravity... I was like, wait, where's the box? So without the debug menu, um, you can see the, the range of things affects. It does require an antenna, however. You should see right about here. We should lose... Oh, we're in the ship's gravity. That's what it is. I was like, why are we not losing gravity? Uh, how about up here? Yeah, there, there's a good spot. So... Whoomp. And... Whoomp. So, that's pretty cool that you don't have to open the debug menu to do all that. Because I've noticed in survival, you can't do this. You can't pull this up, the debug draw. Uh, it won't let you. So this gives people in survival a visual, visual, a visible way 
of knowing where their sensors and gravity range come into play, so I like that. I was really happy about that. Um, as I said, it does require an antenna. If you have this going, but then we deleted the antenna, it wouldn't work because the show on HUD thing, I think, doesn't. Let's test that, actually. I'm curious. I was curious about that in the main update log. If we turn that off... Okay. And then if we turn... Wait a minute, did I turn the right thing off? Yeah. And then when you turn that... So it's show HUD has to be on, even if this isn't... Or I mean, even if that's on and show on HUD is off, it won't come up. Show HUD... Show on HUD has to be on. Um, so basically, because show on HUD has to be active, you need an antenna. If there's no antenna, you can't see the fields uh, through whatever it is, uh, through the sur like survival mode info screen, not non-debug mode. Okay, um, next thing. What is the next thing? Uh, gravity, relay, timer block, remote control. Okay, so these are the two huge parts of the update, right? Um, you will need an antenna for this section um, because the transmission has to be um, the transmission has to be from antenna to antenna. So if the ship doesn't have an antenna, or the antenna is not set up to, or the ship is not set up to share, won't work. Has to be yours. Yes. So the antenna just disavow what I said about the antenna needing to share, because that's dumb. Um, the ship, all of its parts type thing, has to be either set to share mode, to where you can use it, um, or it has to be set to where you're the owner. So if it's an enemy ship, this won't work. But you do need an antenna on that, and the uh, location that you're trying to control it remotely from. Uh, basically, I mean, it, it's kind of common sense. I mean, you have to have some way to transmit a remote signal, kind of like Wi-Fi or something of that nature. And it has to be yours. You can't, like, hijack something. Because um, that would just be too easy to hijack somebody's ship. So, what you will need... Now, you don't need a camera. Uh, I would highly recommend it, but you don't need it to actually work. What you need is one of these blocks. A remote control block. It's like this. Um, it, on a large ship. Yeah, on a large ship it's 15 computer, one motor, 10 construction component, and 10 interior plates. The orientation has a big deal. So if I put it wrong button, like this if I put it like this, when I fly the ship remotely, it's going to think that this way is forward, this is up this is back, like it's going to orient it not like the cockpit, it's going to orient it where this remote block is placed. Because of that, we want to put it correctly oriented. Which I hit the wrong button and happened to hit one that worked. So we want it to orient the same way that the cockpit is. Now I'm going to put a camera here so that we can see what we're doing. Now, like I said before, um, all of this has to be yours, or share mode. Like, um, share with faction or whatever. If somebody else built it, but you're part of the same faction, this would still work, but it has to be in some way, shape, or form shareable, or yours. Can't be anything else. So, you get in here, so we're in the station now, we're not on the miner, but both have antennas. You go to R... And then you can see Small Ship 440, which is the miner. And then you go to Remote Control Block. You can see this, and we can click Control. Now, I'm holding Alt so I can move the camera, but you'll notice um, I'm actually moving the, the mining ship right now. Whee! Hi, guys. How are you? So that's pretty awesome. Now, what you can do here is go into your action bar. Grab the camera and set to view. And while we're here, let's go ahead and select our drills. I think that'll be fine. So, when I hit one, now we're in the view of our camera. So there's us. Here we are flying. And then we can select the drill. We can drill away. 
so on and so forth. Um, fly over here. Woo. Like so. Um, we can exit the camera, but we're still flying? Are we still flying this one? No. Okay. So if you exit the camera, you exit the ship remote control. Now, if we go back in... Remote control, control... Now we're controlling it again. So that's a good thing to note in terms of how all this works. Uh, but that's really cool. Like, I'm excited and terrified at the same time to see what people come up with for using this. This is the other block that kind of scares me, to be honest. Um, not, not in the terms of, like, freaks out, it's just more of, like, what are people gonna do with this? Because this could get into some really crazy stuff. Um, so we're gonna put these here. Now let me go in and turn them off, for now, because I have an example I want to do. So this lovely block, which costs, will set, on a large ship, will set you back five computers, 30 construction components, and six interior plates is a timer. Right? Really odd looking block in my opinion. It's just a bunch of gears, I guess. I guess that makes sense. It's like cogs, like a clock. So when you go in here, we get this, we're greeted with this little panel. We have trigger now, start, stop, setup actions, and delay. So, we go to setup actions. Let's put one here. Uh, toggle on off. We'll put one here. Toggle on off. And I'll, I'm going to go through a couple different examples. Um, and I'm not an expert or anything, so if this doesn't work correctly, then, you know, bear with me. So let's do three seconds. Now, in theory, if, I've un if I understand this correctly, the way it works is it runs through its queue, but it does so at each delay. So when I hit start, it'll wait three seconds, turn this light on, wait three seconds, turn this light on, and then stop because that's the end of its queue. Right? So when you go to setup actions, that's the end of its queue. So let's find out. Now if trigger now skips the delay, it's basically like, let's just run through each action. So start, to one, blink, oh wait, no, hold on, why did it turn both of them on? Was there no delay between each one? Does it do them both? Oh, I thought there was a timer delay. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's um let's try this again. I'm I'm figuring this out, I think. Remove. Uh, increase delay. Is there a way for me to set this, though? Is what I want to know. Like, what happens if I put this... I don't know. I don't know how much it's increasing it by. Go away! Gosh. I don't... I don't quite get that. I don't know what it's increasing it by, but whatever. And I can't add another one, apparently. Anyways, let's try this. Uh, toggle on, and let's see what that does. Start. One light comes on. No, they both come on. So, I don't quite understand that part, but let me, let me go over, okay, so, turn those back off. So, I'm not sure how to delay each one, but the timer apparently delays, um, like, let's, let's add something else here to the queue. Maybe that will help things, I don't know. Let's add something that visibly is obvious, but not a light. Piston. 
that's what they used in the examples anyway. Alright, so set up actions. Toggle on. Let's leave that. Let's increase velocity. See, it's not... It's not letting me increase it by a value, though. It's not going to do anything. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, whatever. Reverse. It's, we'll leave that as reverse. Um, then we'll add... Toggle on and off. For the second light. Now, if you want to loop it... Um, you put a start for the timer block back at the end, and then it will just keep repeating. That's not what I meant to do. I didn't mean to trigger now. See, the trigger now... Okay, so it activates the whole queue. Then, because all of these are happening at the same time. Like, the piston's moving and the lights are turning off. So I was thinking it was sequential, that it went 1, 2, 3, 4, but it looks like it's just turning the whole queue on at the same time. But you can see, putting a start at the end, it like delays it and then does it again, then it delays it and then it does it again. So you can create a loop in this fashion so that you could have something that if you wanted it to blink repeatedly or, you know, I know we, I know they already added for lights the blinking system, I'm just using that as an example of if you need a piston to go up and down, you know, rep repeatedly or whatever, you can do that. Um, and the other thing is that these can be manually controlled. Now, the other really cool thing they showed in the, um, the other video, the changelog, not changelog, update, update is the word I was looking for, the update video, is, um, looping between each other, and what I mean by that is this. Let me go in, turn these three off. So what I'm going to do here is we have two timer blocks. So we're going to set up the first one, and that's going to be these two turn on and off, but... or no, wait. Is that right? No. These two turn on and off. And then it, um, it will start block three. Okay? And we'll set a th four second timer delay. And block three will have a five second timer delay. And its action will be to turn this one on. Okay? So basically, you've got this one goes off, turns both of these lights on, waits for, or it'll wait four seconds, turn both of these on, then it turns this block on, waits five seconds or whatever, turns this one on. Um, and then what we could do, if we really wanted to make things complicated, is... Uh, where's block... At the end of this one, we can put timer block 1, a start command in there, so it'll actually loop both of them. If I did this right. So we have 2, 1, 2, 3... Oh, it blinks too! One, and then one, two, three, four, five, turns off, and then starts this one again. So you can actually have multiple sets of cues using different timer blocks to delay everything, uh, so on and so forth, which I think is pretty amazing. Not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome. Um, hang on. Set of actions, let's just clear these. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I gotta fix that before I end the episode, or before I take my screenshot. Um, so yeah, really cool. I'm really excited, mostly about the timer blocks and the remote control. I'm really, really interested to see um, how all this gets used in like community. Ooh busted up stuff in like community builds and things like that um, I'm really curious to see about that kind of stuff so I think that'll about wrap it up for us here wrong button uh, that'll about wrap up our 
update episodes, so I'm going to end the episode here. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!